Hey guys, today we're going to talk about Cushing syndrome and we know that Cushing syndrome is due to increased levels of cortisol in our body. So I think it's better to first talk about cortisol a little bit and then proceed to the Cushing, uh, to Cushing syndrome. So as we know, hypothalamus releases corticotropin uh, releasing hormone or CRH which has a positive effect on the anterior pituitary. Now anterior pituitary releases ACTH or adrenocorticotropic hormone which that has a positive effect on adrenal cortex and to be more specific the zona fasciculata. Now this causes uh, increased production and secretion of cortisol. Now if we have too much cortisol in our body what happens is that cortisol will negative feedback the hypothalamus causing inhibition uh, of CRH so there's no more CRH being released which eventually leads to decreased secretion of ACTH as well. So this is how we maintain cortisol level in our body. Now we can talk about some of the important things that cortisol does to our body and this little mnemonic should help us remember those. BBIIG which stands for big and uh, we should also remind ourselves that cortisol is known as a stress hormone. So if your body is under stress cortisol is going to be uh, synthesized and secreted. Okay, and this stress could be anything if you're hungry or if you have an infection, any type of stress. Okay, so for instance, if you have low blood pressure, cortisol will cause increase of alpha 1 receptors. As we know, they, um, these alpha 1 receptors, when they're stimulated, they cause vasoconstriction. So if you have low blood pressure, um, alpha 1 receptors will cause vasoconstriction, bringing your blood pressure back to normal. So cortisol actually uh, maintains your blood pressure. It also inhibits bone formation. It, it is an anti-inflammatory. It decreases your immune function and it increases gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, and proteolysis. So now we can talk about some of the uh, Cushing syndrome uh, symptoms. The first thing is hypertension. We just talked about um, how cortisol increases the alpha-1 receptors. So um, a lot of cortisol is going to increase a lot of alpha-1 receptors, so obviously it's going to lead to hypertension. We said in it, it, uh, that cortisol inhibits bone formation, so if it inhibits bone formation, it's going to cause osteoporosis. We also said that it is an uh, anti-inflammatory and it suppresses your uh, immune system. So these are some of the important things that it does to suppress your immune system. It inhibits the phospholipase A2. It will inhibit the interleukin-2, and it also inhibits histamine release from the mast cells, okay? And uh, other specific things are muscle weakness with thin extremities. Now, we just said that cort uh, cortisol causes proteolysis, and the reason it does that is to, to get some amino acids, okay, to be used for gluconeogenesis. So it needs to break down the muscle, and muscles are made of proteins, and uh, there's a lot of proteins in the muscles. So once you break those down, um, you're going to make a lot of amino acids. Um, other things are moon facies, buffalo humps, and trunk obesity. Um, we said that cortisol causes increase of glucose. So if you have increase of glucose, you're obviously going to have high insulin. Okay. So if you have high insulin, the insulin will actually cause fat storage. Okay. So that's why these people have those buffalo humps. That's why their face is in the, uh, round, like a moon, and they have trunk obesity. Another thing it does, it causes abdominal stri, which means that, which is due to impaired collagen synthesis. So you have thinning of skin. So these are pretty much stretch marks that you can see in some individuals. Now there are different ways for Cushing syndromes to develop. And number one causes exogenous steroids. So if someone's taking a lot of steroids, what happens is that these steroids, which are pretty much the same thing as cortisol, will negative feedback the uh, hypothalamus and eventually negative feedback the pituitary. So there's going to be decreased secretion of ACTH from the anterior pituitary. Now, if there is no ACTH available, the adrenal glands will not get stimulated and they're not working, so they become atrophied. The second reason is primary adrenal adenoma. In this case, one of the adrenal glands has the adenoma, so it's secreting a lot of cortisol. So that cortisol now is going to negative feedback 
the hypothalamus, and then the anterior pituitary, then leading to decreased ACTH production from the anterior pituitary. Now, the normal adrenal gland is the one that's going to go, uh, that's going to become atrophied because the one with the adenoma is going to go under hyperplasia because it's working a lot, it has the adenoma, so it doesn't matter if there's ACTH available or not. So in this case, it's going to be unilateral adrenal atrophy compared to exogenous steroids with, which had bilateral adrenal atrophy. So this is how you would distinguish between these two. The next reason is ACTH secreting pituitary adenoma. In this case, the problem is the pituitary itself. It's secreting too much ACTH. Okay, So too much ACTH will stimulate both adrenal glands, and both adrenal glands are going to go under bilateral hyperplasia because now they're working a lot more. So they're also going to secrete a lot of cortisol, but there won't be any negative feedback in this case because pituitary is going to has the adenoma, so it doesn't really matter if there is any uh, negative feedback. It's still going to secrete a lot of ACTH. The next reason is paraneoplastic ACTH secretion. For example, small cell carcinoma of the lungs. Now, problem here is the tumor somewhere else is secreting too much ACTH. And this also going to lead to bilateral hyperplasia of both adrenal glands because now they're working more. Okay, So in order to differentiate between these two, we can give the patient high dose of dexamethasone because they both are presenting with bilateral hyperplasia and increased ACTH. So we got to differentiate between these two. And what high dose of dexamethasone does, it suppresses the ACTH secreting pituitary adenoma, but not the paraneoplastic ACTH secretion. And a way to remember this is that small cell carcinoma of the lungs, if you were to compare it with the uh, pituitary adenoma, are a lot worse. Okay, So it's a lot harder to control small cell carcinoma of the lungs than it is to pituitary adenoma. So this is a way you, should, uh, you can think about it. I hope this uh, helps you guys. Please subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and post comments. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, good luck to you all.